if you want to find the amount of water that a container that's shaped like this can hold, if you know these lengths, how do you, how do you find the amount of water it can hold? The amount of water this can hold is just another way of asking, what's the volume? And we particularly care about this shape. Like this is not one of the common shapes, right? This is not a cone, this is not a cylinder. But it's something in between a cone and a cylinder, if you, if you think about it. Because it is like uh, converging like this, but not completely all the way to become a cone. We call this a frustum of a cone. I like to just think of it as a bucket or a, or a tumbler or an ice cream cup. And I think that we uh, specifically study this shape because this is pretty common. Right? A bucket is a common shape and the amount of water a bucket holds is something that you can actually care about in the real world. So how do you do this? Um, you can go ahead and maybe like look up the formula. Somebody has derived it for this particular shape itself. If you put in this length, this length and this length. But if you're like me, if you uh, don't remember it or if you don't know it or if you don't like to remember it, the way to do this is to do what we're doing for all the other problems, which is look at this shape that's a little unfamiliar and ask, can I represent it as solids that are familiar to me? And in this case, the answer is yes. You can just imagine it to be made of a bigger cone from which a smaller cone has been cut out. So a large shape that's familiar for which we know the formula. We, we spend some time remembering the formula for the volume of a cone, right? It's 1 by 3 pi r squared h. So we remember that. So find the volume of this larger cone, subtract the volume of this smaller cone and you'll get the volume of this. Now, that's the strategy. You can go ahead and do it, except that there are some lengths missing, right? If you notice, I'm just going to label this now. If you notice, to do that, I need the height of this smaller cone and I need the height of this bigger cone, both of which have not been given to me directly. Now, I say directly because they have been given to me indirectly. Like the moment I see this length, this length and this, this height given to me, there is only one bucket I can have with these dimensions, which means there is only one cone I can draw that completes them. But how do I find this height h1? The observation I make is this triangle over here. I know this is a cone, but if you look at it right from front, in other words, you look at a cross section, this will be a triangle. This will be a triangle and they will be similar triangles. This angle is equal and this is 90, this is 90. So A, A similarity, if you want to be precise about it. Then what we can do is write this side by this side will be equal to this side by this side. The reason this should strike me is that I'm looking for a relationship such that I, which I can use, some equation that I can form that will connect my unknowns, my h1, to my knowns over here. So now I can actually go ahead and write that equation. What would it be? h1 by 6. Or I, can, or I can write it the other way as well. I can write h1 by h2 will be 6 by 9. That's another way of, another way of writing it. So I'm going to write that. h1 by h2. Equals So my unknowns on one side and I, I have my knowns on the other side. 6 by 9. Now, a good thing is H2 is not independent of H1, right? It's just H1 plus 4. So I can go ahead and write H2 as H1 plus 4, which means I will reach that state that I like, which is one equation, one unknown. I know that's solvable. So uh, I can just cross multiply and find the answer. So it's going to be 9 H1 equals 6h1 plus 4 into 6. So 6h1 plus 6 into 4, that is 24. Now I can uh, subtract 6h1 on both sides. That will give me 3h1 on this side and 24 on this side. Which finally gives me h1 equals 8 centimeters. Notice that this is the key idea. The key idea is being able to visualize this cone over here using similarity to find this h1 over here, with which you can find h2. h2 equals, this is 8, this is 4, so this is 8 plus 4 or 12 centimeters. And you've done all of the hard work you need to solve this problem because now it's just about writing the volume of this bigger cone, which is 1 by 3 by R2 squared. I'm going to call this large radius R2. R2 squared H2. That is the volume of this big cone. I want to subtract from this 
the volume of the smaller cone, which is 1 by 3 pi r1 square. I'm going to call this small radius r1 square h1. Now notice that you have all of this. r2 is available, h2 you found, r1 is available, and h1 you found. Which means now this boils down to doing the calculation without making any mistake. Now let's do that. So 1 by 3 into pi can be taken out common. 1 by 3 into pi, I'll take it as 22 over 7. Let's maybe draw a line here so that we know that this is where we did that calculation. This is where we're finding the volume. And this can be multiplied by r2 squared, which is 9 squared. 9 squared multiplied by, I'm going to write 81 for 9 squared. 81 into h2, which is 12. 81 into 12. That looks like 81.12 minus uh, r1 squared, which is 6 squared. That's 36. 36 into h1, which is 8 centimeters into 8. Now, you can notice everything here is a number. Whatever you get in centimeters cube will be the answer. Now, you can go ahead and do this calculation. Maybe you can take something out common. Uh, I'm, I just did the calculation and what I got was uh, 7, 1, one second, let me just check, 716.57, 716 716.57 centimeters cubed, which is another word of saying about 716 ml, centimeter cube is the same as milliliters, or 0.72 liters, so it's under a liter, about 750 ml, is the volume that we got for this, uh, so it's not really a bucket, it's probably a tumbler, a large one, so that's what we have here, now what I want you to know is that the only way I can make a problem like this difficult is by giving you numbers that become really messy. Some couple of decimals here, decimals here. Uh, do all of that so that this calculation here itself will take you many minutes. But notice that this part, if you did have a calculator, would become very easy. So the method as it is, is pretty straightforward. Imagine it to be a big cone minus a small cone. Find the height of the smaller cone using similarity like we did over here. Use that to find the height of the bigger cone, after which you can just subtract the two volumes. So, uh, I used to find it pretty weird when these numbers got really large. So, don't question the method you're using because the numbers get large, because that's what, that's what I was doing, at least when I had to solve these questions. So, with all that, any question you see, it's better to use this, in my opinion, than to have to plug into the formula, which does not provide you any intuition.